Well, alrighty. It is the weekend. That means it is time for another OTRS Central Q&A video. Who's excited? And maybe me. So that makes like at least half to three quarters of one of us. All right, we'll go there. Um, but thanks to all of you that submitted your questions. Without wasting any more time, which I love to do, let's go ahead and get started. WNC Podcast. I've been on the show again, or before, I hope to again. I had a lot of fun, except when they brought up some Memphis mid-card piece of crap stuff, because that just sucks. Uh, they ask, what should WWE do with Big Cass when he comes back? Uh, you would think that their vision would be to make him a not boring Baron Corbin. Uh, and ultimately, looking ahead long-term, big picture, you need to get Cass in a position where he could be a viable opponent for both Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Doesn't do any good to build up Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman if they don't have believable, appropriate dance partners. So whatever you got to do, you got to build up big Cass in a way that makes him viable, that makes him believable, that gets him ready in a year to 18 months to be able to square away with both of those guys in a program. That's what you got to do. Mounties Corner. Uh, where's the Shane versus Daniel Bryan angle going? Where do you think it will go? Does anybody know? That's my question for all of you guys. What the hell are they doing with this? And if it doesn't culminate with a match at WrestleMania, which is kind of strange and odd in and of itself anyways, like if I am going to bring back Daniel Bryan for WrestleMania, the first opponent I would have in mind, the second opponent, the third opponent, the fourth opponent, the fifth opponent, none of them would be Shane McMahon. It's just a square peg in a round hole. It's all types of fucking odd. And it's one of these things where... If you're going to continue to do it, then there needs to be a payoff. And if there's not, then stop this dumb shit immediately. Oh, and most importantly, hashtag fire road dog. I don't know where it's going. I don't think it's going anywhere is the way it seems to me. Michael Corvin, who has a more iconic nose, Al from Happy Days or Triple H? Al from Happy Days, he had a schnoz on him, that's for sure. But God's has equaled how many? WWE World Championships, what, 14? Married the Boss's Daughter? Many WrestleMania main events? Three Daughters? Breakfast Club founder? Click member? That schnoz wins, praise God, on everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Ugh. James J., do you think Vince Russo could fix how bad the product is currently? Fuck no. When it comes to a writing standpoint, Vince Russo has created as many big stars in wrestling as I have or you have over the past 15 or 16 years. And that's a fact, Jack. That said, Russo is no super person. None of us are super people. No one person could fix how bad the product is currently. Nobody. The only person I think that would be worse than Russo would probably be Jim Cornette. Um, but Russo couldn't fix it. There's no way. And no one person could fix it. That's how bad it's gotten. So hell no, he couldn't do it. But he's not alone, and that's not to bust on him or blame him because it would be unfair to do so. Wenger out. A keep, push, fire. Finn Balor, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn. I think this should be a push, berry, fire, but we will go with, no, you know what? The fundamental premise of your question is incorrect. Therefore, Wenger out, I have agreed to modify it. Push, bury, fire. Finn Balor, Dolph Ziggler, Sami Zayn. Push Finn Balor straight to the Cruiserweight division where the hell he belongs. Bury Sami Zayn because he is boring as hell. The only thing that's ever been appropriate about him was when he wrestled under a mask as El Generic all those damn years because he is fucking generic. And of course, fire Dolph Ziggler because... Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Waste of fucking time if there ever has been one. Bo O'Neill, what's your prediction for the WrestleMania 35 main event? Somebody versus Roman Reigns for one of the two WWE World Championships. It's been four straight. Why not make it five straight main events? Seems like pretty good betting odds at this point, doesn't it? If you said Roman Reigns versus The Field in the WrestleMania 35 main event... You'd feel silly if you didn't take Roman Reigns in that spot. I'm just saying. Uh, James Faluka, should AJ versus Shinsuke close Mania if it ends up being for the WWE title 
uh, to save the show and make sure that the main event doesn't end with a bunch of booze. No, hell no, good God no, there is nothing about that that merits a WrestleMania main event. Sorry, New Japan Marks. Sorry, SmackDown lovers. It's true. This match is more likely to be in the first half of the card than the second half of the card, which the show is probably going to need because it's going to be umpteen dozen damn hours long. It does bring up a more interesting question of what is the match that really should main event WrestleMania 34, and I will do a separate video on that topic. But AJ Shinsuke, no effing way. No thank you. The phenomenal one. Who should induct Psycho Sid when he goes into the WWE Hall of Fame? Johnny Ace? Scott Steiner? I'm going to tell you right now. And this is a humble brag to the humblest of brags. There is only one person that could truly capture the essence of everything that is, was, and always will be Psycho Sid. Nobody would do Psycho Sid more justice in a Hall of Fame induction speech than the Schleich Daddy. It's a cool way to bring everything full circle. And who would you trust to put over Sid more than me at that type of forum? Who would you trust more than me to go the distance, to brag about the greatness of Psycho Sid? I mean, we could play softball there on the Hall of Fame stage. Who could stop us? It's his night. Nobody, and I mean nobody, would do him more justice than this guy right here. Sorry. Okay. Got a little caught up in the emotions there, but it's true. Hug life for life. Chances the WWE finally forgives Hulk Hogan and he's at WrestleMania 34. Uh, well under 50%, probably about nil and zero. That's the way it is. Casey Pena. Worse for WWE in 2014. Letting CM Punk walk or Batista's treatment? Um... I don't know if you really, can you really truly pin either one of those on WWE? Uh, they didn't let CM Punk walk. He chose to walk. You know, ultimately, Punk made his decision and executed on it. You can blame WWE for things getting to a certain point, but ultimately Punk made the decision to conduct himself in the way that he did. So let's not just blame Vince and Hunter and WWE for that. Punk has to take culpability for that, so I won't put that on them. And as far as Batista's treatment, I mean, they brought him back. He won the Royal Rumble. He main evented WrestleMania. Yes, they quickly jobbed him out afterwards. I understand that. Um, but that was the fans and getting all caught up in their crap and trying to hijack things because they just had to have Daniel Bryan. And look what that got you now. A nice memory that means grand shit in the scheme of things for the company's history. So I don't know what was worse for him. Uh, maybe the Batista stuff because the Daniel Bryan stuff got overbearing and it was a joke and it was stupid and it was one of those things that kind of proves that sometimes as much as the WWE doesn't know, the fans don't fucking know either. Because we're, again, what's Daniel Bryan doing now? Andrew Harrington. If it happens, should Taker and Cena main event WrestleMania? That will be a topic that I will discuss coming up in a video soon about what Matt should actually main event WrestleMania 34, so stay tuned. Everett Harding, would it have been better for The Rock to turn heel at WrestleMania 17 instead of Austin? You can make the argument that anything could have been better than the Austin heel turn at WrestleMania 17. To me, that was the epitome of the stupidity of that show that I've always felt as overrated as bricks that I hate, have hated, and continue to hate 17 goddamn years later. Because it was literally, now that you've conquered WCW, they're out of business, ECW's out of business, you can do whatever the fuck you want, so you're going to take the guy that was the guy for the past several years and turn him heel because you fucking can. It was dumb, it was stupid. So if turning Rock heel would have avoided that, then yes, it would have been better because anything would have been better pretty much than what fucking actually did happen. A Midnight New Mosaic asked, Why don't you have a Patreon account for your channel? Um, there's a few reasons. Number one, uh, I think it goes back to the old stupid newsletter crap for, um, oh God, almost six years ago. 
And I took a lot of heat for that, and I took a lot of shit for that. It was a dumb product. It was a dumb idea, but it was still ultimately a product and all the crap about eBay and all this other stuff to where now literally like everybody bought me fucking eBags. Like that's what Patreon is. You are literally asking for donations. That is eBegging. Whether you're okay with eBegging or not, still the fundamental thing is I took a lot of shit years back for something that pretty much everybody fucking does now and it's become okay and it's a cool thing. So why the fuck would I do that? Also, when I look at the t-shirt sales or the lack of t-shirt sales for the channel, yeah, maybe the shirts aren't the greatest, but still there were shirts available. Haven't sold that that many of them. What would make me think that people would be willing to donate to where you would get to that point of a threshold to say, people donate enough to make it worth the shit that you would potentially get? Eh, I don't think so. And honestly, instead of people donating to me, I would rather them invest it in their own lives and in their own things the way it stands to me right now. So I'd rather people buy a shirt because then I don't feel so bad because at least I can say it was a form of capitalism. You know, I put out a product and people choose to buy it. That's not e-begging. That's not asking for donations. That is offering something in return for cash. Uh, and I just, I look at it and also think about it this way too, to answer this question in another way is it would be really whack to ask for donations and then not give anything different or new or exclusive in return for that because it would require one of two things either a to take some of the content that i already provide and make it available to patreons first which seems kind of whack because then it penalizes people that choose not to donate but do maybe like the channel and enjoy watching me and my thoughts and my wrestling related content or B, it requires me to do a whole bunch of different content when the interest level just frankly isn't there. And honestly, the time just isn't there either. So it is what it is at this point, but I don't really see the appeal in it. I don't see where the payoff would be, and I just really have no desire to do it. And at this point in time, it's like one of these full circle things where I used to get all this shit about one thing. Now, like I said, several years later, it's all these WWE sheep and kiss-ass fanboy fuckboys that are doing all this goddamn e-begging, and I'm on the outside. But I'm still evil, so fuck it. But nope, I'm good on that. Anthony Lopez, which fan base is the worst? Smarks? Marks? Or anti-Smarks? Who cares? Really, Anthony? Who cares? They've all got their good. They've all got their bad. Who cares? Ultimately, we are all fans of the wrestling business at a down time in the wrestling business, in a lane time in the wrestling business, and we waste our time with it. And a lot of people try to sit there and justify what they watch. And frankly, the truth is, it's because our standards have been lowered so much. So... Nah, I'm not gonna. I just blast all of them equally when I choose to see fit. Victor Tran five six two. Are you still going to WrestleMania? No. It's funny. I literally a couple of weeks ago was prepared, and I still have it. I had my money set aside for the ticket, for my travel, hotel, all that stuff. I was going to start nailing down the logistics. Then WWE decided they wanted to go to war with me. And they wanted to put a fucking fan. Your Memphis mid-card piece of crap. 10,000 guitars broken. Zero dimes drawn. Piece of jabroni into their WWE Hall of Fame. I cannot support that. I cannot financially contribute to that portion of the product. So no. I don't plan on fucking going at this point. Maybe next year. I have better things to do with my money. I'm sure as hell not going to go and support that crap. DeLone Wolf. Should WWE scrap the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal for a woman's battle royal? Oh, God. Who cares? And then the thing talking about maybe they'll have both a men's battle royal and a women's battle royal. Oh, get this fucking Title IX shit out of wrestling. Ugh. Good Lord. Because honestly... Other than getting more women on the show, it doesn't really help any of them. It's like it doesn't help the guys either. So in the grand scheme of things, who gives a crap? And that's what I say. Brian Knight. Is Cody Rhodes a hypocrite 
for raging at you, but not Kenny Omega for basically saying the same stuff about how WWE sabotages guys. Cody Rhodes is a hypocrite. Cody Rhodes is a bitch. Cody Rhodes is wrong, and he goddamn good and well knows it. He's a liar on several different levels. That's okay. His karma will collect on him someday. That's all right. Can continue to be okay with Brandy doing all that shit until her head gets full, so full of smuck, fucking smoke. Her head gets so full of fucking smoke, excuse me, and she leaves his ass. All right. This, your karma will collect. Yes, he's a hypocrite. But the world is full of hypocrites. We can all be hypocritical from time to time. So what's the difference? Um, but he knows he's full of shit. And he's even said so himself that Vince sabotages. So I was right. He was wrong. Plain and simple. G from the 313. Weird, speaking of Cody Rhodes, that I would ask myself a question for the Q&A. Because, because Cody Rhodes is a fucking idiot. Uh, G from 313 asks, What's your take on WWE getting away with their BS contracts? Talking about them being independent contractors, even though they're not really independent contractors, meaning the WWE doesn't have to provide the wrestlers things, such as health insurance, 401k. They don't have to pay uh, the company's portion of the Social Security tax. The guys and gals are too stupid to do anything about it and too desperate to do anything about it, so they get what the fuck they deserve. Plain and simple. Uh, Kieran Chase asked, is Zaza Pachulia a dirty player and did he fall on Russ or Westbrook purposely? First, Kieran, my thoughts are with you. I know you just lost your dad and that can't be easy, so I hope things are going well for you. Um, Russell Westbrook is full of shit, though. Is Zaza Pachulia a dirty player? Perhaps. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, he's a clumsy oaf. Did he fall on Russ on purpose? I, I doubt it. I mean, he's just kind of a clumsy big dude. You know, and maybe Westbrook needs to be stop being such a damn baby. Uh, that's the way I look at it. Philosophy jerks. You're good at ob objectivity, but what NFL teams do you hate? Oh, I still hate the Green Bay Packers. I hate the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions to a much, much lesser degree. Oh, but I'll still always hate the Cheeseheads. It's the fucking Packers as a Bears fan. I will always hate them. And I hate the Vikings, too. I hate, hate, hate them. Real talk, I hate the fucking Cowboys, too. Because all these Cowboys fans, especially of my generation that like to talk shit, know goddamn good and well the only two reasons they became Cowboys fans was because their parents and granddaddies were before them, and then they happened to start really watching and pay attention when the Cowboys won three Super Bowls in a four-year stretch. They will talk all this shit to me about the Bears in the grand scheme of things. The Bears have more recently been to both a Super Bowl and an NFC Championship game than Jerry Jones's Dallas Cowboys, so eat shit. So those would be three teams right there. But I can hate them and still be objective, and I feel like I am. Uh, Josh Sweeney. What will it take for the Cleveland Browns to turn it around? I was going to say they still need to fire Hugh Jackson because it doesn't matter if you bring in a quarterback if Hugh Jackson doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Uh, but the number one thing that turns it around is getting a franchise quarterback. You get that franchise quarterback, everything falls into place really, really quickly. Whoever that dude is for them in this 2018 draft, they need to get that guy. I still think it's Josh Allen for them. But I'm sure they'll go the Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield route. And we'll see if they end up being right. Uh, why is it now? You know, I've never actually learned or bothered to pronounce your name correctly. No, I don't care. Uh, you're this late in the Q&A. You're probably not watching anyways. And if you are, that's cool. And just so you know, dude, I still got the books down here. Remember, as Jesse said, don't start the revolution without me. Uh, when are you going to put a baby in that black girl? You want some real talk? Real talk? Who knows? Who cares? It's not like the first time I made a baby went very well for me. And every couple of weeks when I look at that paycheck and I see well over 20% of it, not eaten away just by taxes, just eaten away by the child support payments and the medical and other crap that I have to provide, for one slipsy slipsy oopsie daisies 11 plus freaking years ago it makes you wonder if you want to have any more just saying so who knows 
I'm in no rush. And the real talk is, I'll be 37 this month, I ain't getting any younger, and I'm not trying to be an old dad. So, yeah, but what are you going to do? And then Mason Clark closes us out by asking, Is it worth getting a pet, knowing one day your heart breaks when they pass away? Absolutely. It is a part that sucks, is you can sit there and get caught up in the knowledge of knowing that there is an inevitability there, and that is for sure, and that's not easy. You know, and like when I had the three cats, you know, all three of them passed away in a year's time. That was really hard. That's tough. I still think about them all the time. But, you know, here's the way I'll put it. If you had friends in school, would you not be friends with them, knowing there's a good chance that someday some of them could die before you do and you have to see them be buried? No. You can deal with some of the bad to think about all the good and great and wonderful memories that they provided you, right? I mean, I think about it as a sports fan, too. Where all the years of watching the Chicago Cubs suck and suck and mostly suck some more worth it to get to 2016 when they finally won the World Series? Absolutely. They may never get back to it again in my lifetime. They may never win one again in my lifetime. But all the heartbreak and all the years of suck was most certainly worth it for the payoff that ended up coming. But yes, having a pet is absolutely worth it. I mean, 10 to 15 to 20 years of great memories and lots of happiness and joy for a short period of absolute sorrow to still have memories that linger on well after they have left you? Oh yeah, it's absolutely worth it. Absolutely, totally, and completely worth it. Even as heart-wrenching and gutting as the pain can be when they're gone. You, I've never regret for a single day having precious and feisty and smoky, most certainly. Um, even with the pain of losing them in such a short window of time after so many years. Yeah, I'll never, I'll never regret that for a second. I still think about them every day. You know, I got the two dogs and the two cats now. Yeah, knowing someday what could potentially happen. I try not to think about that. It's for the reminder, jerk. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's worth it. Don't let that hold you back from some of the great things that they can bring to your life. Because it more than pays for itself time after time after time. I promise you, Mason. Don't let that fear hold you back. Because that is no way to live. Anyways, some good questions in this Q&A. Thanks for hitting me up. Thanks for watching. Remember, I am the Schleg Daddy. This is OTRS Central. And it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Indeed. <laughs>